My name is Akila Richards. I am a black poet. I will not remain silent while black people are being murdered in the US and abroad. I have a right to be angry. Power. The difference between poetry and rhetoric is being ready to kill yourself instead of your children. I am trapped on a desert of raw gunshot wounds and a dead child dragging his shattered black face off the edge of my sleep. Blood from his punctured cheeks and shoulders is the only liquid for miles. And my stomach churns at the imagined taste while my mouth splits into dry lips without loyalty or reason, thirsting for the wetness of his blood as it sinks into the whiteness of the desert where I am lost without imagery or magic. Trying to make power out of hatred and destruction, trying to heal my dying son with kisses, only the sun will bleach his bones quicker. A policeman who shot a 10-year-old in Queens stood over the boy with his cop shoes in childish blood and a voice said, die you little motherfucker. And there are tapes to prove it. At his trial, this policeman said in his own defense, I didn't notice the size nor nothing else only the color. And there are tapes to prove that too. Today, that 37-year-old white man with 13 years of police forcing was set free by 11 white men who said they were satisfied. Justice had been done. And one black woman said, they convinced me. Meaning, they had dragged her four ten black woman's frame over the hot coals of four centuries of white male approval until she let go. The first real power she ever had and lined her own womb with cement to make a graveyard for our children. I have not been able to touch the destruction within me. But unless I learn to use the difference between poetry and rhetoric, my power too will run corrupt as poisonous mold or lie limp and useless as an unconnected wire. And one day, I will take my teenage plug and connect it to the nearest socket, raping an 85-year-old woman who is somebody's mother as I beat her senseless and set a torch to her bed. A Greek chorus will be singing in three, four time. Poor thing, she never hurt a soul. What beasts they are. The poem is by Audre Lorde. My name is Dorothea Smart. I am a black poet who will not remain silent while black people are murdered in the US and abroad. I have the right to be angry. The Death of Joy Gardner by Benjamin Zephaniah. They put, her in a, they put a leather belt around her, 13 feet of tape and bound her, handcuffs to secure her, and only God knows what else. She's illegal, so deport her, said the empire that bought her. She died, nobody killed her, and she never killed herself. It is our job to make her return to Jamaica, said the alien deporters. Who deports people like me? It was said she had a warning that the officers were calling on that deadly July morning as her young son watched TV. 
An officer unplugged the phone. Mother and child were now alone. When all they wanted was a home, a child watch mummy die. No matter what the law may say, a mother should not die this way. Let human rights come into play and to everyone apply. I know not of a perfect race. I know not of a perfect place. I know this is not a simple case of yardies on the move. We must talk some race relations with the folks from immigration about this kind of degradation if things are to improve. Let it go down in history. The word is that officially she died democratically in 13 feet of tape. That Christian was over here because pirates were over there. The Bible sent us everywhere to make Great Britain great. Here lies the extradition squad and we should all now pray to God that as they go about their job they make not one mistake. For I fear as I walk the streets that one day I just may meet officials who may tie my feet and how would I escape? I see my people demonstrating and educated folks debating the way they're separating the elder from the youth when all they are demanding is a little overstanding they too have family planning now their children want the truth as i move around i'm eyeing so many poets crying so many poets trying to articulate the grief. I cannot help but wonder how the alien deporters, as they said to press reporters, can feel absolute relief. My name is Khadija Sassay. I'm a black poet who will not remain silent while black people are murdered in the US and abroad. I have the right to be angry. I'm going to read a poem called For the Brave Young Students of Soweto by Jane Cortez. Soweto, when I hear your name, I think about you, like the fifth ward in Houston, Texas. One roof of crushed oil drums on the other, two black hunters in buckets of blood walking into the fire of Sharpeville, into the sweat and stink of gold mines, into your children's eyes suffering from malnutrition while pellets of uranium are loaded onto boats. Head for France, for Israel, for Japan. Away from the river so full of skulls and Robin Island so swollen with warriors. And the townships that used to overflow with such apathy and dreams. And I think about the old Mau Mau grieving in beer halls and the corrupt black leaders singing into police whistles. And I think about the assembly line of dead Hottentots and the jugular veins of Allende. And once again, how the coffin is divided into dry ink. How the factory moves like a white cane, like a volley of bullets in the head of Lumumba. And death is a death life held together by shacks, by widows who cry with their nipples pulled out, by men who shake with electrodes on the tongue. And Soweto, when I hear your name and look at you on the reservation at Hossa in the humid wrinkles of Shreveport, Louisiana, walking down Fannin Street, into the bottom hole in the wall of endurance. I smell the odor of our lives together made of tar paper, the memories opening like stomachs in sawmills, the faces growing old in cigarette burns. And I think about the sacrifices made in Cape Town, the sisters being mauled by police dogs, while the Minister of Justice rides the tall ship of torture down the Hudson River in New York while vigilantes under Zulu masks strike through the heartland like robots in military boots with hatchets made of apartheid lips. And Soweto, when I look at this ugliness and see once again how we're divided and forced into fighting each other over a funky job in the sewers of Johannesburg, divided into labor camps, 
fighting over damaged meat and stale bread in Harlem, divided into factions, fighting to keep from fighting the ferocious men who are shooting into the heads of our small children. When I look at this ugliness and think about the Native Americans pushed into the famine of tribal reserves, think about the concentration camps full of sad Palestinians and the slave quarters still existing in Miami, and the diamond factories still operating in Amsterdam in Belgium, the gold market still functioning on Wall Street, and the scar tissues around our necks swelling with tumors of dead leaves, our bodies expl exploding like whiskey bottles as the land shrinks into the bones of ancestor bushmen. And I tell you, Soweto, when I see you stand up in the middle of all of this, stand up to the exotic white racists in their armored churches, stand up to these land stealers, infant killers, rapists and rats, to see you stand among the pangas, the stones, the war clubs, the armadillos dying along this roadside, to see you stand with the ocean, the desert, the birthright of red cliffs, to see you stand with your brave young warriors, courageous, strong-hearted, looking so confident in battle marks coated in grief and gunmetal tears, to see you stand up to this epidemic of expansion and flame pass books into ashes, fling stones into the mouths of computers, to see you stand on the National Bank of America like monumental sculpture made of stained bullets, to see you stand empty-handed, your shoulders open to the world, each day young blood falling on the earth. To see you stand in the armed struggle next to Mozambique, Angola, Namibia, Zimbabwe. Soweto, I tell you Soweto, when I see you standing up like this, I think about all the forces in the world confronted by the terrifying rhythms of young students, by their sacrifices and the revelation that it won't be long now before everything in this world changes. My name is Michael Datcher. I am a black poet who will not remain silent while black people are murdered in the US and abroad. I have the right to be angry. This poem is entitled, But Then Freedom Is. But Then Freedom Is those moments when you know nothing and everything all at once, are conscious of no other life and all life together. When the whole world is at once in you and far away from you, when the mind is still but a mission. This poem is by Nordica Francis. My name is Mohammed Mohammed. I'm a black poet who will not remain silent while black people are killed in the US and abroad. I have the right to be angry. This poem is called I Dream a World. I dream a world where man, no other man will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace its path adorn. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, where greed no longer saps the soil, where greed no longer saps the soul, nor avarice blights our day. A dream I dream where black or white, whatever race you be, will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free where wretchedness will hang its head and joy like a pearl attends the needs of all mankind of such I dream my world by James Langston Hughes My name is Patricia Foster I am a black poet who will not remain silent while black, black people are murdered in the US and abroad I have the right to be angry. This poem is called Not an Elegy for Mike Brown. I am sick of this poem, of writing this poem. But bring the boy his new name, his same old body, ordinary black dead thing, 
bring him and we will mourn until we forget what we are mourning. And isn't it that we, what being black is all about? Not the joy of it, but the feeling you get when you are looking at your child, turn your head, then proof, no more child. That feeling, that's black. Think, once a white girl was kidnapped and that's the Trojan War. Later, up the block, Troy got shot and that was Tuesday. Are we not worthy of a city of ash, of 1,000 ships launched because we are missed? Always, something deserves to be burned. It's never the right thing nowadays. I demand a war to bring the dead boy back, no matter what his name is this time. I at least demand a song. A song will do just fine. Look at what the Lord has made above Missouri. Sweet Smoke, written by Denise Smith. My name is Ronnie McGrath. I'm a black poet who will not remain silent while black people are murdered in the US and abroad. I have a right to be angry. 99 names of the Sambo. <coughs> Bilal. Ibn. Beloved. Son. Brother. Husband. Father. Grandfather. Kin. Elder. Ancestor. Sold. Livestock. Cargo. Chattel. Property. Guinea bird. Savage. Enslaved. Captive. Servant. Worker. Heathen. Cannibal. Beast. Blackamoor. Darky. Nigger. Uncivilized. Wog. Fuzzy Wuzzy. Coon. Negro. Tamed. Eunuch. Pet. Uncle Tom. Minstrel. Gollywog. Survivor. Mirror. Mask. Chameleon. Creole. Signified. Dehumanized. Damned. Vilified. Debased. Silenced. Invisible. Camouflaged. Trickster. Caliban. Signifier. Threat. Animal. Oversexed. Terrorizer. Buck. Bull. Breeder. Raper. Lynched. Raijin. Rebel. Warrior. Busa, Kujo, Leader, Toussaint, Revolutionary, Guerrilla, Cimarron, Subversive, Coffee, Duppy, Conqueror, Outsider, Illegal, Other, Criminal, Refugee, Foreigner, Exile, Uprooted, Immigrant, Sojourner, Hyphenated, Prodigal Son, Garveyite, Rasta, Nubian, Kushite, Nation, Fulani, Blood, Progeny, Family, Bilal. This poem was by the poet Dorothy Smart. My name is Tolu Agwilisi. I'm a black poet who will not remain silent while black people are murdered in the US and abroad. I have the right to be angry. I know I'm not sufficiently obscure by Ray Duran. I know I'm not sufficiently obscure to please the critics, nor devious enough. Imagery escapes me. I cannot find those mild and gracious words to clothe the carnage. Blood is blood, and murder is murder. What's a lavender word for lynch? Come, you pale poets. One refined and dreamy. 
Here is a black woman working out her guts in a white man's kitchen for little money and no glory. How should I tell that story? There's a black boy, blacker still from death, face down in the cold Korean mud. Come on, with your effervescent jive, explain to him why he ain't alive. We word our specific discontent into some plaintive melody. A little whine, a little whimper, not too much and no rebellion. God no. Rebellion's much too corny. You deal with finer feelings, very subtle. An autumn leaf hanging from a tree. I see a buddy. <laughs>